23 boxes. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I am trying things out a little bit differently today, so the angle is a little different, so I don't know, let me know what you think. But I am here to give you another pregnancy update. The last time I was on here, I made the really exciting announcement that we are pregnant, and I am still just as excited as I was uh, two and a half weeks ago. So. Um, Things have been moving right along. Uh, really just excited to see what the next few weeks bring. Uh, for those of you guys who don't know, my name is Elizabeth. I live in Arizona. I'm married to a wonderful husband and already have one beautiful, almost two-year-old daughter named Charlotte. And we just found out that we have our second on the way. So uh, really excited to just give you guys an update on my symptoms and where things have been since the last time I talked to you. So I've got my cell phone here. Here. I've been tracking all of my symptoms for the last couple of weeks and to give you a heads up so I think today I am six weeks and four days by the time you see this I'll almost be seven weeks so I figured the best thing for me to do is just give you an update for week four week five and week six and what has been different throughout those weeks so let's go ahead and get into it let's see Okay, so week four, uh, first thing that I have on the list was swollen and sensitive gums. So I didn't have this at all with my first pregnancy, but I know that it's pretty common to have just really sensitive gums while you're pregnant. It's something about the hormones that you have going on, I think, in your system. It just allows bacteria to grow a little bit easier in your mouth. So gingivitis is really common when you're pregnant and just having really sensitive gums in general is really common so that was a really big symptom for me this time around which was really annoying I already floss my teeth every single day I've been doing that religiously for the last probably three or four years now uh, so I take really good care of my teeth already but I don't know what was going on my gums were so sensitive luckily a week after um, that uh, started kicking in I already had a dentist appointment to get my six-month cleaning so I went in there, I told them everything that was going on, they gave me a really good cleaning, and actually since then I haven't had that issue with sensitive gums. So that's kind of gone now, which is really good, and now my, uh, my gums are back to normal, which is good. Uh, second one on here, so week four, the exhaustion started setting in. Now exhaustion is something that's really interesting during your second pregnancy because I feel like parenthood in general is just perpetual exhaustion. Like you you just like learn how to survive life being really, really tired. And so when the exhaustion started kicking in, I honestly couldn't tell if it was exhaustion from the pregnancy or if it was just like normal everyday being tired because I'm chasing around a toddler. Uh, but I think the biggest difference was that by the time nighttime came around, I could not keep my eyes open past 9 p.m. And that's continued. So I think last night I went to sleep at 10, 15, and that's because I took a three hour nap in the middle of the day. So I have just been really, really exhausted, really ready for the day to be over by the time I hit my pillow at like 8.30. Um, next one is gas. I think I mentioned this in my two week wait video, but oh my God, week four, the gas was horrific. I would be at work and I'd have to like leave my desk because I didn't want to offend anyone. It was just really bad, really embarrassing. I haven't had issues with gas for the last week or so, so fingers crossed that one is over, but week four, it was horrible. Also in week four, I had some acne breakouts. So I have pretty decently good skin and I, I try to take pretty good care of it. I use good skincare products, like that's really a number one priority since hitting 30 last year. Uh, so I don't really typically get acne, but this was a lot of hormonal acne. You can probably see I've got like a little something still there. I've got some bumps on my chin. I also have some bumps like on my forehead up here. They're just like everywhere. I I did not break out like this with my first pregnancy. I had crystal clear skin, like even better than normal my first pregnancy. And uh, and this one is definitely not the same, so that's kind of a bummer. Um, intense stomach bloating. So 
in week four, you know, a week after I had found out that I was even pregnant in the first place, I I knew that in your second pregnancy you start showing a lot earlier than you did in your first pregnancy because your your stomach is already kind of stretched out. It knows what it's supposed to do, so it just gets to that point. But in week four, I remember waking up and looking in the mirror and I'm like, I look like I'm 20 weeks pregnant. Like I just found out I was pregnant yesterday. What is going on? So the bloating has been really, really intense for the first probably two weeks it was every day like it was just uncomfortable bloating my stomach was huge distended really uncomfortable uh, coming into this week week six it's gone down a lot and now it only happens every once in a while so, so you know sometimes in the middle of the day I'll all of a sudden just have a ton of bloating but it's not constant which is nice and then uh, next one is ravenous but feeling full. So this is a really frustrating one. I've been feeling like I just need to eat constantly, but I'll take two bites and I'll feel full and I can't eat anymore. So it's really frustrating feeling that way. I do remember feeling that way with my first pregnancy as well, so I'm not super surprised by that, but it's really frustrating because I feel like I want to eat, but if I eat more than like three bites of something, I feel sick to my stomach. And then another really big one, I've always struggled with sleep since I can remember. I've had issues not really with falling asleep, but with staying asleep. I have a little bit of insomnia. Uh, so for a while now, since actually I was pregnant with Charlotte, I've been taking half of a Benadryl every night. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Benadryl is totally safe to take during pregnancy. It's one of very few things that is safe to take during pregnancy. So uh, even this time around, I asked my doctor, made sure I could still take Benadryl while I was pregnant. He said it was totally fine. Uh, but even with taking that half of a Benadryl every night, I, especially in week four and also going into week five, I was tossing and turning all night long. Like I would fall asleep just fine and then I would wake up two hours later and I would be tossing and turning for the next four hours. So really, really annoying. The one that I wanted to save for last, this has been the weirdest one. I don't know where this came from. It's out of nowhere. I have had the most intense cravings for junior mints of all things. I've never been a huge fan of Junior Mints, like I've always liked them, but I've never been like really crazy about them. You guys, the week that I found out that I was pregnant, I bought, I am not exaggerating, 23 boxes of Junior Mints. Not like the little mini ones, like the theater size boxes of Junior Mints. I ate all of them in a week, 23 boxes. Maybe that's why I'm feeling so gross. That has not gone away, so we'll keep talking about that. But that was pretty much it in terms of all of my stuff for week four. Um, going into week five, I had pretty much all of the same symptoms that I had for week four. I still wasn't sleeping very well at night, um, and I started feeling slightly nauseous. So I really didn't get nauseous at all in my first pregnancy. This one is just a little bit of nausea. I'm not getting so sick to the point where I feel like I can't you know, work or anything like that, but I am feeling a little bit nauseous throughout the day, every single day. Um, in week five, I also started feeling just hot all the time. That's also a really normal symptom because you your body starts making more blood and you have more blood throwing, flowing through your whole body. So I was just feeling hot all the time. I'm still feeling hot all the time. I'm like sweating constantly. If I take two steps outside, I'm dripping in sweat. It doesn't help that it's 115 degrees outside right now in August in Phoenix, but uh, yeah, that was a big one, very annoying. And then my boobs started hurting a tiny bit. So not the same as they were when I was pregnant the first time around. That was one of my big tip offs that I was pregnant the first time was that my breasts were so tender, I could barely even like graze them with a t-shirt and they would hurt horribly. Uh, this time around, it really hasn't been that way. They hurt a little bit. Um, my nipples are a little sensitive, but other than that, like they feel Fine. They don't look any different. They don't look any bigger. So um, yeah, that was just kind of a, a weird one. And then actually going into week six, 
So it's been um, a little bit different than weeks four and five. I'm actually sleeping better now, so I'm not tossing and turning as much all night long. I'm able to get a full night's sleep. Um, Randomly, I'm waking up naturally at about 5 or 5.30 a.m. every morning and actually have like quite a bit of energy first thing in the morning. So I'm taking advantage of that. I'm working out. I'm using that time because my first pregnancy, the whole first trimester, I was so exhausted I could barely get out of bed to go work out and that really kind of fell by the wayside. So I want to use that energy as much as I can for as long as I can this time around because I know I'm probably not going to be feeling like waking up and going to the gym for this whole time um, so that's good I feel like I've got energy in the morning by the time 11 a.m. hits I have no energy left so I'm taking what I can get uh, I don't really have any food aversions currently smells really bother me and I smell everything so my husband had curry last night and we were eating in bed while we were watching a show and I had to have him like move to another part of the room because the smell was just so overwhelming it was making me want to throw up um, but other than that like not really any big symptoms I still feel nauseous occasionally throughout the day but nothing so crazy that I you know can't handle it um, still tired but that's all normal I guess the weirdest thing is that I I truly am getting a little bit of a baby bump now which is so odd to say being only six weeks in to the pregnancy it's like I cannot believe that I have just a little tiny like you know pooch so um, so yeah that's really weird but also kind of exciting I I told myself I'm determined to enjoy this pregnancy as much as I possibly can and embrace the baby bump and embrace all of the the body changes that come along with all of that because that's a really big piece that I think people don't recognize is going to happen especially their first pregnancy they don't I know I didn't realize that I was going to not even recognize my own body and it was really really hard to work through mentally the first time around the second time around though I'm really excited about it I feel more uh, secure in myself I I now know what the female body is capable of doing which is just such a miraculous thing and I am fully intending on taking advantage of that newfound um, just uh, I don't know, excitement about about my body changing. I guess that's another thing. So a big, I this was a horrible, horrible side effect of my first pregnancy and it's already started this time around. Pregnancy brain, you guys, oh my God, it's the worst. I like just won't, I just like can't remember words. Mine just goes completely blank and it's so frustrating. It's so annoying and it lasted my entire pregnancy last time. It's already started this time, so pregnancy brain plus mom brain, I am not looking forward to that. But I think that's pretty much it. So that's where we are. Oh, I'll open up my um, pregnancy apps that I'm using. The main one that I'm using right now is Ovia Pregnancy. I used this the last uh, pregnancy as well. It shows you like how big the baby is, uh, what's going on with their development. It'll also, once the baby's big enough, it starts showing you real size of what their hand and footprints look like, so that's really cool. Uh, but this says uh, right now in week six, six weeks and four days is how far along I am. It says baby number two is about the size of a main blueberry and hates antioxidants oh no hates oxidants just as much that's dumb but yeah baby's the size of a blueberry so what like I don't know like that big Is that right something like that crazy last week it was the grain uh, size of a grain of rice like how is this thing growing so quickly uh, so that's pretty much it uh, in a week and a half we will have our first doctor's appointment it actually falls on Tuesday August 27 no 
yeah, Tuesday, August 27th, which is my birthday. So it'll be my 31st birthday. Uh, really looking forward to hopefully seeing the baby for the first time. Fingers crossed everything is good. We get to hear the heartbeat and uh, everything's going smoothly. So I'm excited. I'm a little nervous, obviously. I feel like the four week wait from when you find out you're pregnant to when you have your first doctor's appointment is a million times worse than the two week wait. So if you're in that window, Godspeed. It is not a fun place to be. I will keep you guys updated on that. I'll be back here next week to give you an update on all things week seven of pregnancy number two. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, anything at all relating to pregnancy, um, symptoms, anything like that, if you just have questions for me, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.